Hi guys, welcome to the sixth part of the tutorial series on WebDream Preferred App. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about uh, dynamic UI programming in WebDream Preferred App. How do we generate user interface dynamically? I've created an example component with example underscore 07, and as usual, I have a view and a window. And in the view, I have a label and an input field and a button. So this is, uh, you know, defining a label and an input element and a button here. So this is the, you know, design of UI element in a static way. We create everything, all the UI elements at the design time. Uh, now I've, an, I've created an attribute under the context number of buttons, which I've binded to the input element here. So whatever I enter in the input field will uh, you know go and sit into that attribute. In the action handler of the button, I have a uh, you know, very simple code here. I'm reading the value in the attribute number of buttons. The code I've generated is by code wizard. You just select read and then select the attribute that you want to read and then the system will generate all this code. So I'm taking this variable and uh, you know, assigning that to a global variable, global attribute that I've defined here. So that, I mean, the reason why I did this is because if you have an attribute here, I can use this attribute in inside all the methods. In, I can access that inside all the methods here. Right. Okay. So let's go and, uh, you know, look at the actual application here, how it looks on the screen. So I have an input field and I can enter any integer here. Let's say enter five. Or let me start from the beginning. Okay, so I'll enter, let's say five here. And then click. You can see there are five buttons that were generated on the screen. Button one, button two, three, four, five. Now, as you can see, I've not you know, define these buttons in the layout at the design time. These are generated by the system at runtime. If I click any of the button, I get a message. Uh, you say click button four, which means other than creating the buttons and the layout, I'm also assigning action handlers to these buttons at runtime. Okay. If I reduce the number here, I can only see uh, two buttons here, the three, four, five, the other three buttons disappear from the screen. So I'm dynamically removing the buttons as well, you know, other than adding the buttons dynamically, I'm also removing them dynamically. So let's see how, you know, how we can uh, do that. Uh, as I mentioned in my, I think, hook methods tutorial, all the dynamic UI programming should happen inside modify method. Like this is the place where you write your dynamic UI generation code. Before going to the code, um, you know, let's see how do we create buttons at design time. Right? I right click here, and then I say insert element, and give some name here, and select button, right? and then I enter some text. and I create an action handler. Okay. So this is how we do at design time. Now, if you want to generate these buttons, or any of the UI element uh, on the screen, first you want to understand what are the properties that you usually fill, you know, the, usually fill when you create that same UI element at design time in a static way. So, there are three things here. One is the layout. Now, the layout by default is flow layout. Right? It's, it's defined at a root UI element. It's a flow layout. So all the children will follow that particular flow layout. Okay, that is one thing. And the other thing is the text that is visible on the button. And the third thing is the action handler. So there are three things that you need to set when you create a button at design time. So the same things, if we can do at runtime, then there's no difference 
then, then there is no difference between creating something at design time or at run time. So that's what exactly we're going to do in the WD modify method. Okay. So what I'm doing here, if you see the you know import parameter for the modify method, you have something called view, right? And this interface will have a, uh, a method called get underscore element and you can pass the name of the element that you want to get reference so you know because if you want to create a button you always go to the root element and click you know, insert element so we need to get a reference to that root UI element first that's what I'm doing here okay and then uh, just just for a, for a minute just forget about you know this kind of this code about removing the buttons uh, let's go to the create buttons so this thing wd this gv number of buttons is the attribute that I've created and I'm filling this attribute in the action handler of the the first button right so whatever number I've entered there like I entered five in the demo so you'll have five here okay. so I, I'm doing a you know do loop here so I will do this five times and then I'm incrementing a counter basically so first time it will be one and then I'm taking to this string and then so I said, uh, you know, you need to have a text for the button, and you need to have an ID for the button. Right. So I'm basically creating an ID here. So it will be like button, and the LB string will have one. So it will have button one, and then similar thing here, the button ID also button one. Okay, and then there's a class CLWD button for every UI element that you can insert. Uh, in the view at design time there is a class how can you get the, those classes you just put star here and then a 4 you can find you know all the things you have a button you have a class for button you have a class for button row you have a caption you have a checkbox checkbox group each and everything all the UI elements will have a separate class and you need to just explore that class and what are the methods available and CLWD button will have something called new button static method called new button and uh, the, the, it will have some import parameters for the ID so I already have uh, uh, you know, an ID here and then what is the text and this is the interesting part the on action so action handler now I've given as a button score act but then um, where is this action defined? Right. You cannot, uh, you know, create those actions at runtime. So what I've done, I've defined an action here, button underscore act. Okay, and then uh, the system will generate an action handler, event handler here. So, so which means, uh, you know, all the buttons that are generate will respond to the same action, basically. Okay, so that is. So we have done button ID, we have created a text, we have assigned an action handler, and then this is the flow data. So even for the flow data or the row data or you know the matrix data, we'll have a class similar to that. So and then I call this static method and I pass in this reference here. So which means I'm saying uh, please assign flow layout to this button. Something like that. If you want to have row data, you can have row data. Um, and then finally, so I've set all the you know mandatory things that uh, I set a design time for a button so I've done with you know button creation so I'm finally I'm going to add that button to the container so this container is nothing but root UI element so the system just adds those buttons so this is how we create a button now uh, there's a problem okay the reason why I have this code for you know deleting the existing buttons is if I enter now I have a two buttons here if I increase the number to something else and I click OK system will try to create button 1 and button 2 again using this code but then the button 1 a button with the ID button 1 already exists in the view so it will dump so what you need to every time you know I every time the system calls this modify method what I'm doing here is I'm just checking 
number of children under this root UI element container and I know that there are three UI elements that have created at design time label input and button one right uh, okay this one I think I need to remove it okay so I have three UI elements already created so I don't I don't want to delete them so I reduce that uh, you know the, the number of children by three and then do a uh, you know do loop so the button ID follows this pattern right button one button two so I'm just getting the button ID as we did in the create case and then I'm calling the remove child method of the container and passing the ID you can also pass the index the the position of the UI element and that's it that's so that will uh, remove the UI element dynamically Right, so that's how uh, uh, the removal of the UI element from the screen happens. If you see here, I'll refresh it again. Okay, so I'll create three UI elements and then I say four. Yes, I'll say one. The system will remove it. And so, I mean, the removal basically happens every time I you know do a click action. Now coming to the action handler, how do we, uh, uh, you know, triggering the action is basically as I told you, I've created a, an action called button underscore act, and that itself creates an action. The system will uh, creates an event handler, and the event handler method I'm uh, having the code to, you know, give that message. But then when I click a button, somehow I'm displaying which button I've clicked, even though there's only one action handler I'm able to recognize which of the button the user is clicking if I click button 4 I say button 4 button 2 and button 2 so how I'm doing is how I'm uh, doing all this is if you see the action handler you have something called WD event now this WD event has a parameter uh, sorry as a method called uh, get string okay and if you can pause the ID here it will give you the basically the ID of that uh, UI element which is triggering that event okay so this will contain uh, the button ID basically right so then I'm concatenating that with the this thing uh, message and I'm giving that message so you can use the WD event class methods to get some information about what is the UI element that you clicked? What is the ID of the UI element? And based on that, you can uh, you can um, you know estimate. You can um, get to know which UI element that user is clicking. And then based on that, you can take different actions. So, uh, I mean, the, the, why I'm stressing on that is if you want to do you know instead of displaying uh, the message, if you want to do something more more important, like you want to fill a particular table, and if you want to click another button, you want to open another window click and you want to go to the next view so what you can do you can use this and then you can use this output here and then you can have a case statement or if statement which will have a different piece of code for each of the action for each of the button that you clicked on the screen so you can achieve that with a single event handler okay so hope I'm you know clear uh, in explaining the dynamic UI generation We'll meet in the next tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, I will talk about how do we create the context dynamically, right? So this attribute I've created static at uh, the design time. How do can we create context attributes and nodes dynamically? And we can also bind the dynamically created attributes to the UI element for the input UI element. For instance, I, you know, did the binding at design time. Now in the next tutorial we'll see how you can generate this input UI elements and the context attributes and bind them all at runtime. Okay, so we don't do anything at design time. Okay, good. Um, thanks for uh, watching the video. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.